So PHP is a server-side language, and without it should go without saying that we need a server. So we can't just parse PHP simply on our desktop or in our Windows or Linux machines. We need to have some kind of server. Um, with JavaScript, we could just put it right into an uh, HTML file and just use it right on our desktop. So you have a couple options. You can use your hosting, you know, your private web or whatever, your uh, whoever you use for a web host or dedicated server or something like that. Or you could use a platform like XAMPP or WAMP, which will give you an Apache server, PHP, and MySQL all on your uh, in this case would be our Windows machine okay so I'm gonna go over how to install that we're gonna install XAMPP um, but again you can use your web server so to download XAMPP we want to go to uh, apachefriends.org and you just click on XAMPP and we want XAMPP for Windows and it's available for Mac and Linux so what this includes is Apache, MySQL, PHP 5.4, PHP MyAdmin which we use to to interact with the database and then FileZilla and this stuff we don't really care about right now um, we already have FileZilla installed this is a server, this is the FileZilla server. Um, and we also have a control panel which we can admin all this stuff. So it's really good, it's open source and it's free, so that's always good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go down to download and I'm gonna download XAMPP and I'm going to download the installer. Okay, I'll just save that and it's a pretty big file uh, it's almost 100 megabytes so it might take a few minutes I'm actually gonna pause the video and come back when it's done alright so our XAMPP file is now downloaded so I'm going to go to that and it's just going to install just like any other Windows application alright so this is just giving us a warning that we're using the user account control system on Windows uh, you can go to control panel and, and shut it down or or, clo or shut it off um, but I'm just gonna leave it because there shouldn't be any issues so we're just gonna run through the wizard um, you can install everything here if you want but I'm actually gonna leave out Tomcat Mercury Mail Server and FileZilla okay I'll keep everything else and I'm just going to use the default location. I'm not sure what this bit NAMI is. I've never seen this. Um, I don't really care. So this will just take a minute. Alright, so now we're getting a pop-up that's requesting um, permission through the firewall. I'm just going to say allow access. Alright, so now it's asking if we want to start the control panel. We're going to keep that checked and click finish. So this is the control panel. Um, if, if you remember, I, I opted not to install these three. So Apache and MySQL is all we really need here. Now we're actually seeing an error here that Apache will not start because port 443 is in use. Um, 
I actually I think that this has to do with the UAC, the user access control in Windows. Um, so I'm going to actually disable that. I'm going to go to Control Panel. I think it's in System and Security. User Account Settings. I'm going to drag this down to the bottom. Never notify. Click OK. Now let's try to restart the. Oh, I guess we get to restart the actual machine. So. I'm just going to restart and now we're back and I'm going to go to my XAMP control panel and hopefully that error is cleared up looks like it is alright so what I'm going to do is we can choose to start and stop the Apache and MySQL services if we want or we can install them as a, as a core service that will start with Windows and will always run so I'm going to do that by clicking on these X's. And we can still start and stop from here. So I'm going to start both. Alright, so now on our local machine we have Apache running with um, the latest version of, I think it's the latest version of PHP installed. And we have a MySQL um, database. So if we go to computer, the, the default installation of XAMPP is right in the C drive. And if we click on the XAMPP folder, we see a bunch of other folders. And this is basically our web server. Uh, we have PHP installed. We have Apache. We have MySQL, Perl, um, all kinds of stuff. So the folder that we want to use for our websites and web applications is the htdocs folder and that's equivalent to your public html or your www folder so this is where we want to build our applications and by default we already have some stuff in here alright so we have um, some images our favicon and let's just go to you can access your server in two different ways you can use 127.0.0.1 or you can just use localhost okay and by default when you install XAMPP and you go to localhost it redirects you to the XAMPP folder which is right here and to the splash.php page which is right here now you don't need to do, you can get rid of this XAMPP folder if you want and then just access the root of your server. Um, but we're going to um, use this, this little panel for a minute. So we want to click on our language, in my case is English. And we have a couple things here we can do. We can, we can access phpMyAdmin from here, um, FileZilla if we installed it, and some other stuff. Um, but what we need to do is click on security and right now our MySQL admin user does not have a password and we are on a local machine so uh, you don't really need it but I would definitely suggest just getting in the habit of giving your database a password your database user a password so it's very easy all you have to do is click on this link here and select the password alright so looks good I'm just gonna click on password changing alright so it was successfully changed now we have to restart MySQL and that's easy all you have to do is click stop and start alright and we can also access phpMyAdmin I'm not gonna go into it now because uh, we actually have a section dedicated to this stuff so but we can access it and I'm going to use the password I just created and these are just sample databases over here uh, with tables we can create a new database if we want I'm not going to do this now this is uh, the next chapter so um, let's see what should we do let's just create a directory and let's just call it test now we can do whatever we want here. I'm just going to create a new 
text document and call it index.html. And I'll open it. And I'm just going to write testing, save that. So now I can go to localhost slash test. And we get our index.html file. Now I can change this to index.php. And now if I reload, it's still working. Now we couldn't run this, this index.php file anywhere else on, the, on our system. It has to be in our web server htdocs. If I copy it here and paste it on the desktop and try to open it, I'm going to try to open it with um, I'm going to open it with Chrome. It says testing, but this wouldn't parse PHP. So actually, let me prove that to you so you know I'm not lying. Let's say PHP echo test. So I'll save that and reload. And it actually has the text. It, has, it shows the text of the PHP tags. Um, so if we do the same thing, In our test in our on our server, let's open that up, save that, and go back to localhost slash test. And you can see it's printing out test. It's not showing us the actual text in the file, it's parsing the PHP. So that's where we'll be building our applications. We'll have different folders. Um, so now if you followed along, then your computer uh, should be prepared to start writing PHP.